Hello, I'm James Pierce, and welcome to the Town TV studio for a very special announcement. Well, actually, a series of very big announcements. Over the course of the coming minutes, you're going to see and hear from a number of very important people connected to the football club. But let me introduce you first to the two people sitting alongside me, both familiar faces here at Portman Road. Ed Schwartz, the uh, co-founder, the principal at ORG, which is a controlling shareholder in the football club. Alongside you, Mark Ashton, the CEO. Ed, thank you for coming all the way from the States to be part of this, this announcement. But, Mark, it falls to you initially to tell us what this news is. Hi, James. Nice to see you. Nice to have you here. Yeah, it's, it's great to get the opportunity um, to talk about this finally. Uh, when we joined the football club back in 2021, um, we came with a very clear plan on how we wanted to rebuild this amazing football club and take it forward. And part of that plan was when we got to the championship, uh, we always had a plan that we would recapitalise the football club and look for further investment into the football club to take us on so we could develop infrastructure in the football club, we could invest on the pitch and continue to rebuild the football club moving forward. So today, um, after almost a year's worth of work um, uh, with our partners in the US Bright Path Sports, um, I am delighted to announce that we have completed the raise of £105 million, which will be injected into the football club as we move forward. And it will give us the cash that we need to continue to build this football club, both on and off the pitch. So again, it's something that we'd planned from day one. Uh, and when we got to the championship, we stuck with the plan and we started this work about a year ago. Um, Ed has been fantastically supportive, as have the rest of the board, uh, the three Lions included, Mike O'Leary, the chairman, Tom Ball, our CFO, all have worked tirelessly, um, both this side and the US side of the pond, uh, to secure the football club's finances moving forward. And I think today, is a really positive day and, as I said, delighted to finally be able to talk about it. Yeah, I mean, you, you say it's a very big number, £105 million. Pounds. I mean, how significant is this announcement? It's key. Uh, it's key because we want to continue to build and we want to continue to build this football club, both, again, on and off the pitch, uh, as quickly uh, as we possibly can. And we've talked to before about the importance of building infrastructure, the importance of people the importance of the team, the importance of the stadium, the importance of the training ground. Uh, and this cash injection gives us the working capital we need substantially into the future and allows us to start to build infrastructure projects, which we can talk about today really for the first time. So I think it's pivotal. I think this is a pivotal day and there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes to get to this point. Uh, and now we can start to implement the next set of our plans. A lot of this is, is quite complex finances, and I want to try and be as, keep it as simple as I can for the, the fans who are watching as we go through. But, but first of all, tell us a bit about Bright Path, who these, who these new investors are. Yeah, you know, as Mark talked about uh, this exciting announcement and the idea of bringing 105 million pounds into the club. And one of the things that this does, it provides incredible validation to the investment that we made three years ago. Uh, bringing in uh, great people. And one of the things when we set out to do this a year ago was we wanted to make sure we weren't just raising money. The endeavor was to partner with great people that would help move the club forward, uh, provide capital, certainly, but also uh, with people that we could be proud of that could help uh, continue our vision and moving the club forward and providing ideas and, and, and strategic uh, direction uh, to give us the oxygen to continue along the same plan that we were going. One of the things that uh, we recognized, uh, you know, very early on was what a terrific management team that we had and the trust and the confidence uh, that we've built over almost three years um, really is now validated by additional investment, uh, Bright Pass Sports, uh, is, 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 a, is a terrific group. Uh, they uh, have brought uh, amazing uh, connections in, in the area of, of, of sports, media, entertainment, and uh, introduced us to some incredible investors, uh, some of which we'll, we'll be uh, 
sharing with you uh, in a little bit. Yeah, we're going to hear from some of them later. Yes. But to tell us about some of the, the investors and the kind of people we're, we're talking about here. The investors that uh, were introduced uh, to the group and we vetted, including uh, management vetted, uh, are people that understood our vision. Uh, what we didn't want were people to come in and say, uh, no, that, that's not the way to do it. We do it this way in the U.S. It, were, it was people that would get to know the management team and they would be supportive in helping us continue to do what we've been doing. And, and frankly, we've been quite successful so far. We're very proud of that. We all think we have a lot of work to do uh, to continue with our goals, but we wanted to really provide more of the same, more stability, more oxygen, certainly more capital, but not in a way that would take us off course. And part of this is also tying in not only the man alongside you, but the rest of the, the executive team here as, as, as well. One of the things I'm most proud of is that we got renewed commitment from Mark Ashton, who we built a great rapport and trust over the last three years, his team. Uh, we provided a structure where uh, the better we do as a, as, as a club, as an investment, um, everybody wins, where we, we share in, in the benefits of that. We're really proud of that because it aligns interests, so we're all swimming in the boat together. And uh, we're very proud of that, uh, both the commitment, we're very honored to have Mark's commitment and, and, and trust and friendship, and bringing new people on this journey is, is, is really the most exciting thing that I've ever been involved in. And Mark, it isn't just a commitment from you, also Luke Wehern and other key people in, in, involved in the, the club. No, I, I, absolutely. I think, look, bef before I say any more, I want to start by saying thank you to this man because Ed, uh, the Three Lions, Mark Steed in the background have been so supportive from when we joined this club almost three years ago. And we've put together a team of very committed people um, at both the training ground at Portman Road to take us forward. Um, so for Ed, who's worked tirelessly with us um, across both sides of the pond in the last year, um, you know, we, we're extremely grateful for the opportunity to take the football club forward. You're right, um, Ed's been fantastic in and locking in executive management for the long term now um, because we needed to commit to be here for the foreseeable future to take this project to the next level. Um, the investment will see uh, a reshuffle of both ITFC and Game Changer boards, and, and we can talk about that in a little bit more detail. But yeah, uh, you know, we're, we're going to welcome. Luke Waring, who's worked with us and worked myself for many years behind the scenes, will now join, join both ITFC and Game Changer boards. Um, fans will probably have seen Luke appear on the odd uh, transfer deadline picture now and again. Um, but he has earned his opportunity to, to join the board. Tom Ball, who's been instrumental in the whole investment piece, will continue. Um, and as we said, Bright Path Sports, who've worked with us so, so tirelessly over the last 12 months, will also join the board. And I'm delighted to announce that Sam Simon, Sam Simon from Simon Sports will be the major investor into the fund uh, that Brightpath have been raising. Uh, Sam is absolutely top draw, um, met him several times now in the US and here. Uh, he will also join the board uh, and we are preparing for the future and I think we've got good people locked in. Um, and one of the things that this ownership group does, as Ed has just said, is pumps oxygen into us. Um, you know, we have a really strong board who help us set the strategic vision and values, but then they measure us to the plan. They don't interfere on a daily basis. They give us the oxygen and they empower us to drive this football club forward. And again, I'm, I'm so grateful and I know my team is so grateful to Ed and the board for giving us that wonderful support. Now, there are many things that, that Mark and I agree on and we have, we have common ground, but there's one thing in particular that we argue about uh, continuously. When Mark is asked what's the best thing that we did for this investment, Mark always says it was the identification of Ipswich as a club, the fan base, the opportunity is incredible. And I always say, well, I think it's the management team that we have in place can, and the importance of, of, of doing what we've done and locking that up. And as I kind of sit here and think about it, I actually think we're both right. The, the keys to this investment have been Ipswich, the fan base, the community, the support that we've gotten from from the beginning and giving us a chance and an opportunity to, to prove ourselves. 
Um, and then secondly, the management team has been absolutely outstanding. It's been, it, it's not been easy. It's a lot of hard work, uh, missed holidays, uh, missed family time, but the dedication and the commitment by this, this group, uh, we could never have asked for anything more. And that's allowed us to attract the, the best investors we could possibly get. And as we sit here today, I, I couldn't be more proud, as I said, of this, um, of this journey. James, one, one of the things that, that Brightpath have done really well is introduced us to some incredible people. Um, again, you can tell by the gray hairs and the wrinkles, there's a lot more <laughs> air miles on the clock uh, with myself and Tom Ball and the management team. We've been this side and that side of the pond very frequently. But the introductions um, to, to people who want to invest from family offices into this football club have been so, so strong it's allowed us to be selective. And I think fans and stakeholders would expect that of us. This is no normal football club, in my opinion. I've said before, there's no limits, there's no ceilings on what we can achieve here. But for us to keep moving forward in the trajectory that we're in, we have to have the right people with us, the right investment. And Ed has been really keen on this, in vetting people, making sure that they'll, they will line up to the club's values, they will work with us, uh, they won't want to derail us. Uh, and I think with the people that we we have now that will be joining us, we've achieved that. Um, so again, I think this is further stability for the football club, um, further oxygen into the football club, and allows us to con continue to develop at pace. I was still waiting for some names. So we know Sam Simon, you've said, who's the biggest investor in terms of the, the Brightpath investment. But Brightpath has got together, as Mark's mentioning, a number of, of individuals, of, of different I investors. Just give us a few more names there. Tell us a bit more about the kind of people we're going to start seeing at, at Portman Road. Well, Jake Zanow um, and Phil Ciano are the two principals uh, with Brightpath, along with a, a gentleman named Jim Laporte. The three of them are the partners in Brightpath, and we'll be seeing them regularly at, at Portman Road. And they have a number uh, of investors that they have brought in uh, into their vehicle uh, and their group uh, that you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see uh, all, all from the U.S. So how does the ownership structure look now? Because that, of course, is, is important. One of the things I wanted to emphasize also is that ORG, on behalf of, of the pension fund, is not taking any money out of this club. We have rededicated ourselves to this investment. We will uh, still maintain control at 50 percent ownership. Bright Path um, and its investors will have 40 percent. And then the remaining, which includes three lions, will have 10 percent of the club. Uh, so that, that's how the ownership, uh, once this is all uh, completed, uh, which it is completed, uh, will, will look. And of course, the three lions will be very familiar to many of the, of the fans. So what does this all, all mean for the, the three lions? Well, the three lions have been uh, in incredible and supportive, and they actually are bringing more capital uh, to the table as well. So their commitment is actually increasing as well, which we're really excited about. And, and their, their dedication and support, you see them here you know, very often, has is, is, is been very, very helpful. Uh, they also provide the oxygen and the support that management needs. Uh, okay. No, again, Three Lions have been great. Um, they speak to me, as Ed does directly after each game, and we, we talk about, about the results. Um, they've been just fantastically supportive. Um, and again, when we need contacts in the US, they're the first people that we go to. Um, but I go back to it. I think it's the way the board operates that's key for me. Um, you know, again, we have good board meetings. Ed and I might talk two or three times a day. We might talk two or three times a week, depending on what we need to talk about. Um, but they give us that once we've written the plan, once we've agreed the plan, we've agreed the investment for that year into the plan, they just challenge us to deliver. Um, and that lack of interference, if you like, on a day-to-day -day basis, I think is key. That gives me the oxygen to do my job, which allows me to give Kieran and his coaching staff the oxygen to do their job unhindered. You know, we don't have owners who are turning up in the dressing room or at the training ground trying to interfere in recruitment, etc. They back a management team, they back a manager and a coaching staff who are consummate professionals to be the very best at their job. And I think that's our superpower, our consistency, our professionalism uh, and our people. Uh, and I've said this before, our people are key. And I think the future, again today, looks extremely bright for this amazing football club. So this is really a sort of two-pronged announcement. You've, you've got the new investment, yes, but it's the new investors as well. But the, the people who are coming on board, 
not only the freelance you've got already, but new people with new ideas to work alongside them as, as part of the, the ownership group? These are very successful people that have run successful businesses in industry, in sports, and we think that'll be uh, very additive uh, to, to what we're doing. So we're very excited about bringing all these, these new people in, in, into our family. So ORG manages the investment of the pension fund. Someone the fans, again, will, will know and have seen at Portman Road is Mark Steed, who's the chief investment officer of, of the pension fund. What does this all, all mean for Mark? Are we still going to be seeing, seeing him around? You know, I, I can't speak for Mark and his very, very busy schedule, but what this does, it, it really validates uh, Mark Steed's investment uh, thesis. And I couldn't be more proud to do this and do this for Mark Steed, who gave, me, gave confidence in me and my team to help put this together, and Mark and his management team to carry this forward. And as Mark said, he stays out of the way. Yes, he asks questions. Yes, we all have to be accountable, but he gives us the support and the oxygen to be able to do what we need to do and have the success that we've been able to achieve. And one of the key things in this whole effort was to make sure that while we're bringing in this new capital, new investors, we didn't want what's working to change. And so it's going to be more of the same. Uh, Mark and his team is, uh, you know, has rededicated themselves you know, to the club, to the future. And, and again, we, we couldn't be more pleased and more proud. And giving them the oxygen, giving them the capital to, to take this uh, club even further than we've been. Well, I've already promised that we're going to hear from a number of important people connected to the club. We've heard from two of the most important already, but let's bring in a couple of others. I'm delighted to say that we're joined by Mike O'Leary, the chairman of the club, and one of the three lions we've just been talking about Burke Bakke, thank you very much, both of you, for joining us. And Mike, the first question for you, how exciting is this news? Hello, James. Yeah, it's, um, it's very good. Um, if you remember three years ago when we started on this road, we said then we had a plan and a budget that would take us from where we started in League One, hopefully to the championship at some point, and eventually to be knocking on the door of the Premier League. And... That's where we always felt this club needed to be and should be. Um, and this is the next step in that. Um, we started with a budget that was really aimed at getting us out of League One, and that was always going to change once we started to need to put pieces in place to get us ready to have a real good go at getting into the Premier League. And you've already seen some of that. Uh, you've seen that with the new pitch. Um, but there are lots of other things, and, and you'll have heard Mark Ashton talk about some of them, uh, and they don't come for nothing. We have to invest to be able to do those things. And getting investment into a business like this takes a little while. You don't just do it overnight. And this has been a long-term um, plan, which we've been working on for quite a while, but it's great to be able to announce that we've succeeded in achieving it. We now have the resource available to take us forward over the next few years, probably up to five years, uh, actually. Uh, and that'll help us both on the pitch and off. Uh, and overall, I think it's safe to say we're in a very strong position. Um, Berke, I'm sure you, you could hear what Mark and Edward were saying earlier, uh, effusive in their praise of what you and the Three Lions have achieved since you became involved in the club. And this is just a, a further commitment from you and your, your fellow Lions to, to stay involved and, and actually to increase your, your investment in the, in the club. Yeah, no, that's correct. So I'm very excited to have our uh, new partners on board and um, look forward to their valuable contributions. Um, as you know, James, our involvement has started with uh, prior to the initial acquisition of the club on April 7, 2021. And with the identification of this fantastic historical club. And since then, we've been working with uh, Mark, our entire board, uh, to advance the club where it is today. Um, and just like as Mike was talking about, our initial goal was to get the club to the championship and have a competitive team uh, in the division. And I think the results that uh, we're really seeing right now speak for themselves and on this aspect and where we are going from here. And uh, just to your point on your question, uh, I feel like uh, the future is very bright for the football club. And with that, it's important to note that uh, not only we will continue to be involved with the club, 
but also we have doubled down on our uh, investment and uh, really uh, love everything that the club has achieved to date and look forward to the future. Yeah, Berkey, how much have you enjoyed this ride? Because I know you're a massive football fan. You, you love football. You've grown up all your life as a big football fan. To be involved in the promotion journey last season, the promotion campaign as it's become this season, how much fun has it been being part of the, the ownership group? Uh, it's been incredible. Um, I have just a couple of comments. I may, I've been seeing my cardiologist more often. I think I may need, need a new heart uh, because those end, end of the games are not, not, not for me. But it's, it's been an incredible journey. My only complaint is like, I, I love to be there at every game and with, you know, four kids at home. Um, it's, it's been difficult to, to, to be out at Portman Road as, as much as I can, but it's been incredible. It's, uh, it's, it's been such a pleasure to, um, set a goal, have an incredible management team, and see the execution towards that goal um, actually at a timeline that is faster than what we initially have thought. So it's, it's been incredible. Mike, we were talking a bit earlier about some of the changes ar around the board, but just to clarify and, and explain exactly what's happening around the, the, the structure of the, of the board. Let's remember, first of all, there are two boards. Um, we've got a holding company, which effectively looks after the funding, the shareholding structure, uh, and is the, the controlling interest in, in, in what goes on. And that's called Game Changer 20 Limited. And yeah, we're going to be modifying that board to reflect the arrival of some new investors who are coming in at this stage to join us. Um, but at the same time, we don't want that board to be too big because... If, if you allow a board to become too big, it gets very unwieldy and it slows you down when you want to make decisions quickly on things. So we, we've settled upon a board of eight people, uh, four of whom will represent the investors and four of whom will come from the management side of the business. So if you look at who the large investment groups are in, in Game Changer 20, we start with PSPRS, the pension fund, who I'm sure you're all familiar with, and their interests are managed for them by ORG, and Ed Schwartz represents that part of the investment in Game Changer. The second part also you'll be familiar with is the Three Lions, and we'll have Brett Johnson on the board of Game Changer 20 representing the Three Lions. The third part is Bright Path, who are new, um, and Bright Path Will be, uh, will be represented by Jake Zano, who joins the board now. Uh, and finally, Sam Simon, representing the interests of Simon Sports. So those are the four on the Game Changer board representing our major investors. We've had a couple of people stand down from the board to allow that to happen, but there'll still also be four members of the management group on the board. And as you might expect, Mark Ashton, our CEO, Tom Ball, our finance officer, chief finance officer. Um, also, we have Luke Warren joining the board at this time, and finally, yours truly. So that makes up a board of eight looking after Game Changer 20. Secondly, we've also got a board at Ipswich Town Football Club, and that's much more um, sort of grassroots, nitty-gritty, managing the operational side of what we do, both football and non-football. And that's predominantly populated by members of the management team. It's the same four people that we talked about on the Game Changer board. So it's Mark Ashton, it's Tom Ball, it's Luke Warren, and it's yours truly. But we add one investor representative on that board, and that's um, Burke Bakai. And he's already been on that board and he'll remain on it. Uh, so there's not so much change on the Ipswich Town board, uh, just a little bit. We're adding um, adding Luke. So that's where we are on the boards. And Mike, I keep saying this is complicated finance. It certainly is for someone like me anyway. And you're the master of this kind of world. So I'm going to ask you to really clearly explain, because we're talking £105 million of investment here. That's clearly a very big number. I mean, what does that actually value the, the, the club at? Well, it's a lot of money, uh, and I'm very pleased to say that it's uh, a valuation that's climbing. Um, and there are lots of things driving that. Um, you'll know full well that we're selling out the stadium almost every week, where three years ago we weren't. Um, we're selling replica shirts to large numbers of people. 
Uh, we're doing very well commercially and our hospitality revenues are climbing too. And all those things mean that revenue is going up. And when revenue goes up, the club is worth more than it was before. Um, I won't bore you with the detailed arithmetic of it, but suffice to say, that's really good news. And not least, the fact we've gone up a league and we are knocking on the door of going up another league, that also drives valuation to a, a higher level. And all of that is great news. It means our investors are happy that their investments are worth more than they were. Uh, and we as a club are doing well. So it's, I think it's all pretty good news. And Mike, that was language I could understand. So thank you very much. And Berke, thank you both as well so, so much for joining us. And Berke, we look forward to seeing you in the director's box alongside Mike and, and others very soon at, at Portman Road. L looking forward to it. Thank you. So we've made some major announcements. There's actually at least one more still to come. And we've heard some from some of the big players who've answered lots of questions. But I know there are, there are lots more that many of you are going to want to have answered. And one of the key questions I'm going to ask Mark now, that's a lot of money suddenly coming into the football club. Where is it all going to get spent? Um, as we've said, the, the money comes in over a period of time to, to, to back a plan. Um, so, listen, let's manage expectations. <laughs> it's not all going on, on transfer fees and players. Um, I think, again, we will be competitive in that market. But, again, we have to adhere to financial fair play rules. Yeah. Um, but it gives us the stability to take the plan forward. Uh, you know, we've talked uh, before to supporters about the importance of infrastructure. And the first key infrastructure project will be the training ground. That will be a multi-million pound investment. Um, we've already got the pitches in place. Um, we have a fairly detailed design in place now. We'll be re-entering the, the planning process very shortly. Um, and I'd like to be on site this year, um, putting that training ground plan into place and seeing the buildings come to fruition. That allows us to put new facilities in for the first team, um, also put better facilities in for our women. Uh, and ultimately, again, something that we've talked about time and time again is the importance of our academy. So this new investment we've discussed internally and part of this investment will be used to take the academy from cap two to category one. Uh, I know it's something we've talked about and I've always said if and when the time is right, we would do that. We're now committing to that and we will put a, a timeline in place to move to Category 1 Academy status. Which is going to be really big news for, for many of the fans. Let me take you back to financial fair play because, again, the fans are savvy to it these days. that They understand you can't be spending all the money on, on, on transfer fees. But just explain a little bit about the regulations and, and, and what you can and, and can't do. Yeah, look, look we, we're governed by uh, what we call profit and sustainability rules. Um, and we have to adhere to them. Uh, and I've said this before, every penny that the supporters put into the football club, more shirts they buy, more tickets they buy, more commercial revenue we bring into the football club gives us more headroom to spend. Where we are, again, fantastically supported, we have an ownership group who do not take a single penny or a single dollar out of this football club. Every penny they put into the football club takes us forward. So we have to, look, this football club will make uh, cash losses. Why? Because we acquired a very underinvested, tired, rundown football club that needed investment to bring it back to life and bring it back to a standard where it could not only get into the championship but compete on and off the field in the championship. So the investment that comes in will be used uh, to support the club. But again, we have to manage that within the financial fair play rules, as we do. Um, but again, I think we're in, a, we're in a healthy place. We've seen revenues step forward. I said this recently, every time we've asked this fan base to step forward, they've done it. 22,000 season tickets, you know, 45,000 shirt sales, you know, record commercial sales, hospitality, conference and banqueting. The numbers around the football club are growing. As Mike said, this is growing the value of the football club. And now we're supported by new investors added to our uh, already fantastic support from ORG, PSPRS and the Three Lions. We're in a good place. And Ed, let me bring you in on that uh, uh, as well, talking about the importance of the fans and the money they are spending. You know, tough yeah. money in the current climate, but buying shirts, by buying tickets. A message from you, the ownership group, to those fans who are making a big difference to the, the future here. Right. And I think that's a very important point that, that Mark brought up. The supporters are so critical in our ability to 
uh, raise his capital and, and identify people that have so much confidence in this opportunity. The, the fan base, the supporters have been incredible. Uh, as Mark always tells me, they've just exceeded our lofty expectations. No matter what goals are put out there, uh, the fans step up and they, they just exceed them. And, you know, you could see it, you can feel it when you're, when you're present at Portman Road. You see the away support like no other club that I've seen. It's, it's really incredible. And the other thing I'd like to emphasize to the supporters is that we're going to remain sensible like we've been. But our objective is to build a long-term, sustainable, successful football club that the supporters and everyone can be really proud of. And that's really what you know, our role as, as ownership and the board is to provide all those resources and oxygen and direction to give to Mark and his team to achieve that. And as I also like to say, uh, you, you, you call us the owners, but really this football club is owned by the supporters. We're simply caretakers to this great tradition. And this football club was here well before we were even thought of, and it'll be, it'll be here 100 years later. And right now we're, we're caretakers, but we take this role very seriously. And we want the supporters to be uh, proud of this football club like we are and, and recognize the, the, the hard work that this management team has is, is, is just been, been world class. And while all the fans dream of glory, which of course every fan wants, but ultimately it is that sustainability and, and the, the future protection of the club that matters more than, than anything else. No, absolutely. Look, trust me, no one more than myself, Ed, and everyone connected with the club wants to see us successful on the pitch. Um, but we have to also protect the long-term interest of the football club. Um, you know, we've spent the last three years trying to bring the club back to life. Um, this wasn't a nice environment when we first started, um, and we've talked about that. Um, we mustn't forget where we've come from. But the exciting thing is, James, it's the space in front of us. We're nowhere near finished. Um, and again, I go back to it, where we're fortunate is we have investors that treat this like a serious business. This is not a toy. This is, not a, this is not a vanity investment. This is a sanity investment. It's backing a plan. They expect us to deliver on that plan. But they're also realistic on how we deliver on that plan. Um, they're very supportive. Um, they challenge us. And I think you know, the brain power that we've now got around the boardroom table will only enhance the project going forward. What? The other thing I want to add with the new investors that I'm really proud of is the acceptance of the importance of community. And, and, and Mark uh, and his team have spent a lot of time, money, resources on rebuilding the reputation of this club within the community. And the new investors that we have in, in, in this venture are very supportive of that and have, been, and have even asked, how can we help this community? And, and, and that, that's something that makes me realize that this is a good fit. We have the right group of investors that, that embrace that that importance of, of community for this football club. Well, sitting alongside you both, I can feel that the buzz, I, I can understand why you've got so many people wanting to invest in the club. And it's high time we spoke to a couple of the new investors, a couple of the new faces you're going to start seeing at Portman Road, both joining us from the States. Jake Zanu, who is a partner in Bright Pass Sports, which is making this major investment, and Sam Simon from Simon Sports, who is the lead investment, lead investor in this investor group. So thank you both so much for joining us and welcome aboard, both of you. Jake, first question to you. I mean, this hasn't happened overnight, has it? You've been in, in talks for, what, the whole of this season, even since beyond the, the end of, of last season? Well, fortunately, uh, this has been over a year in coming. I was had the pleasure of being invited by Mark and Ed to the promotion game from League One into the championship last year. And that's where my partner, Phil, and I got hooked on this particular club, this management team. And that was the beginning of, of, a, of a long journey uh, that culminates here today. So we've heard lots about Bright Pass Sports, but let's hear it from the horse's mouth. Tell us a little bit about you, your colleagues. What can we expect in terms of your, your investment group? So Bright Pass Sports is a private equity firm uh, based in Cleveland and in Detroit, Michigan. And you know we make investments all across uh, sports, media, entertainment, and related. Uh, but in this particular investment, we're partnered 
I'm honored and grateful to be partnered with Sam Simon, his son Peter Simon, and the rest of his family uh, to make our first investment in uh, in any football asset in the in the world. Uh, Sam, I'm sure right now many Ipswich fans are. Uh, uh, furiously Googling your name, which is something that, that, that I've done uh, many times already. And they're going to like what they see because you've got an amazing story. Just tell us a little bit about your, about your story. Well, Jenna, first of all, thank you, Ed and Mark and uh, Jake. We are so excited. We're so delighted. Um, I can't wait. I'm jealous. I want to be there today, tomorrow. Can't wait to see the team play. But uh, we're, we really enjoy every time. And we get excited every time we're there. We we'll talk to Ed, especially Mark, Mark Ashton. We actually fell in love with him. So that was <laughs> that was the deal. A uh, little bit about me. I mean, you know, uh, came into this country in 1973. We're Armenian. Um, all the American dream. It's uh, yeah, you know, 200 minus with our pocket. Um, Really, it's it, it's excited to see how my dad and my mother and my brothers worked so hard, and then really created uh, a really a great company. And then I'm so proud of my two boys, Michael and Peter. Peter loves sports, and then you know, great family and the love that my dad put to us. And that's what I love about uh, the whole team and whole management here. And you mentioned your, your son, Peter. We should mention him now, shouldn't we? Because he's also joining you in this, this investment through, through Simon Sports. Yes, Peter, Peter was a young age, loves sport. He's, uh, it's all when he was five years old, seven years old, 10 years old, enjoyed every sport, um, loves it, has a passion, has a sport management. Uh, Wayne got his degree in sport management, passionate like crazy. And then I have a passion sport. I played a little bit of soccer, too, when I was young age, so I enjoyed every minute of it. The sport is exciting. And tell me why you've invested. I mean, we've heard from Ed and Mark, and I would be investing myself if I could afford to, but tell me why you've invested, <laughs> Sam. Yeah, yeah, we love the management. Uh, the management was amazing. Uh, the manager, I mean, history of the team, lots of potential growth, uh, passionate fans. Um, really what not to like it's uh they're amazing people i always say i invest in people i invest in management so this 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 was perfect for us as a simon sport and tell me how you're hoping to see some of the money being spent again we've heard from from mark and uh, and Ed, but tell me you know about perhaps what you you're 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 looking forward to seeing the money being spent on most well you know mark shared us you know with us how much he's going to invest you know, into the league, to the players, to the facilities, uh, to the training, the you know, grounds, exactly where we are a big believer in investing for the future. And this is not a, a one year, two years, this is for 100 years and on. Uh, this team got started in 1878, so this is beyond us. So I love to see the investments and then giving the tools to the team to do their jobs, especially the management. No, well, I'm sure the management will be delighted to, to, to hear it. And, and, and Jake, back to you. You know, how, how much are we going to be seeing you at, at Portman Road? How much are you going to be a, a face in the in the stands here? Well, I, I expect to come over as often as I can, and certainly um, at the pleasure of of Mark and the management team. I, I want to echo what Sam uh, said. Um, you know, we support this management team. We looked at teams all over the world. And when we met Mark and Ed, we stopped looking. We love the asset, we love the strategy, but we don't want to get in the in the way of the, the plan. Our, we're here to provide capital, we're here to provide support. If there's uh, ancillary projects and, and input and consultation that Mark and Ed and the team need, we, we will commit 100% of our time and resources to doing that. But first and foremost, we're here to support them and we'll be around as much as they want us to be around. And Mark was talking about the bright minds of which you're very much one that's joining the club and Sam, of course, a, a, a second one, too. But but Jake, what do you think, you know, as one of those of those, those bright minds, you, you, you can add to the, the, the running of the, of the club? Look, uh, my my partners and I do not have experience like Mark and the team running football clubs, but we do have a lot of experience in marketing and commercialization and real estate and things that happen off the, off the pitch. But frankly, 
I want to get back to, you know, my original comment is um, we're here to provide capital and support. And and if uh, the, if Mark and his team need uh, advice or consultation, we'll absolutely provide it. But we love the direction that they're going in right now. And frankly, I don't think they need it. Well, thank you both so much for taking time out of what I know is very busy schedule. And um, we look forward to seeing you here very soon indeed. Thank you. Go talk to boys. <laughs> so another very important and very positive announcement from the club. There have been so many the last few years. Ed, an important question for you. Obviously, a big announcement with these £105 million. But does it stop here, or are you still looking for, for further investment? Well, James, at, at this point, we have no intention or need for any additional capital in, in the near term. So I, I would say that th this should... Uh, this should suffice for, for a good period of time. But the better the team performs and the better everything goes off the pitch, the longer the queue of people probably who do want to get, get involved. Well, look, there's a lot of, lot of additional people that want to get involved, but we're, we're not going to continue to, to bring in any more capital we're, at, at this point. So. And Mark, I've tried to, to keep this as clear as we, we, we can today. As I keep saying it's, it's fairly complex, but you're giving much more information than lots of other clubs would have given around this kind of investment. Now, what's the reason behind the, the transparency here? We debated it internally quite a bit on what we should announce and what we shouldn't announce. And, you know, when we joined the football club uh, April 21, you know, we took a view that we wanted to be transparent. The fans and the stakeholders felt that they hadn't been communi to, communicated to by previous regimes. And we wanted to change that. So, you know, we've got things right. We haven't got things right. But the one thing we've tried to do is communicate with the fans all the way through. So when we talked about the announcement today, we took the view, let's be as honest, as open and transparent as we possibly can. Because, look, you've got some really bright supporters who will go looking at companies' house, will look at financial state and try and work it out. I'd rather be us up front, mm. tell the truth on what we're trying to do uh, and give the fans the comfort that as of that day in April 21, I believe that was a pivotal day for this football club when Game Changer bought the football club. I think today is another pivotal day. This is a pivotal day that secures the long-term future again for this football club. But it doesn't just secure it. It gives us the means to take the football club forward and keep working hard and keep progressing. And again, I would just by finish by saying thank you to Ed, thank you to the board, thank you to Brightpath, uh, to Sam Simon and his family and Simon Sports who are joining us. I think the future for this club is bright. There's a lot of hard work ahead of us, but we have some outstanding, talented, good people around us who can help us uh, move forward. The club's on a bright path, you could even, even say, <laughs> Mark. Ed, I'll leave the final word for you. Mark describes it as, as pivotal. How would you sum up today? I agree. Really, it really is pivotal. And as I, as I said before, there's never been anything I've been involved in, certainly in my business career, that I'm more proud of. This management team, Mark Ashton and his group, uh, are, I put them up against any management team I've seen in any industry. And what uh, has been achieved at this football club in such a short time, we couldn't be more proud of. We're proud of the supporters, uh, Mark Steed and his confidence uh, in us and all of us. Uh, we, we could not be uh, more pleased, more grateful and appreciative and, and uh, also just want to make a special note to thank the supporters who um, er everything we've seen, they, they've exceeded expectations. And the more they, they do and, and, and support, the more shirts they buy, the more uh, tickets they buy, it just gives us that more oxygen, that, that much more ability to, to, to keep things going and move it forward. Uh, so we just wanted to, to thank everybody involved. Thank you both so much for joining us. Thank you to the other guests from all over the globe who have been joining us as well. I'm sure they've put some smiles on some Ipswich Town faces today, which they'll be very pleased about. Thank you for watching us.